Hello, I'm Cosmic and welcome to Indie Tower Defence game Yerminsul. The game was developed by French-based indie developers Black Flag Studio, who were formed in 2013. Yerminsul is also their debut title. In Yerminsul, you play as Nors, a pirate who has been possessed by the evil demon Leth. Leth's sole purpose is to corrupt all the floating islands of Yerminsul and put an end to those pesky forces of good. Pirate Nors also looks like he could be a member of virtual band Gorillas. The game's story itself is told through interactive comics, which are well drawn and for the most part well written. I really like the idea of playing the bad guy, but also not playing the bad guy. While you are doing Leth's bidding, through conversations between Nors and Leth, you know that Nors hates Leth and is plotting to undo him. From a story perspective, it adds an interesting element to the character dynamics. Yerminsul also doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's packed full of comedy, both overt and subtle, which can be really enjoyed by everyone. While at its core, Yerminsul is a tower defense game, it also adds resource management and a real-time strategy campaign map to the mix. From the main map, you can view both the islands that you control and the ones that you don't. The game's world is persistent, meaning that once you conquer an island, the towers and defences that you actually placed on that island while conquering it will stay there. The reason for this is that you are not the sole aggressor in the game. The forces of good aren't just going to sit back and let you take control of everything. They will actively try and take back their own territory. Your sole resource in the game is Infamy. Infamy is used to purchase everything from towers in battle to tower upgrades and powers outside of battle. Capturing islands increases the amount of Infamy you can obtain, which in turn leads you being able to access tougher islands, more powerful spells and more powerful towers. On the campaign map, Infamy increases over time. The more Infamy you start a battle with, the more towers you'll be able to build before the hordes of those goody two-shoes start coming. However, remember that you can be attacked, so you must manage your Infamy carefully or risk being caught with your pants down and losing an island. Let's talk about towers and spells. In battle, you have the use of both your towers and spell abilities. There are four evolution trees that contain both towers and spells and their respective upgrades. The four trees are War, Death, Plague and Famine. Each has their own unique properties, such as Plague Towers tend to cause debuffs and damage over time, while Wall Towers tend to create AoE damage, good for killing bunched up enemies. You also have access to both active and passive spells. Spells can be used to take the fight to your enemy yourself, perhaps by using a lightning spell to help your towers take down a tough giant. The battles themselves are straightforward tower defense battles. Stop the enemy from reaching the center tree while Leth is trying to corrupt it. Maps are well designed and have multiple paths and spawn points which can sometimes force you to think on your feet. Each map is vibrant and colourful, and contains secrets for you to find to gain extra infamy. You'll face 30 plus varieties of enemy in battle, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. One that took me by surprise was a little goblin that summons wolves, or the spider that once defeated spawns 5 fast little tiny spiders. All the enemy variety and their respective tactics and skills really does introduce a tactical gameplay element. In some fights, you may have to change your towers midway through to deal with a new type of enemy or boss. Not only this, but you can only take 4 towers and 4 spells into battle, so choose carefully and make sure to carefully assess whether you're facing goblins, elves or something else entirely before entering battle. One thing I do have a gripe about is some of the UI design choices. In some of the menus, because of its cartoonish look, tabs and buttons can just look part of the background and don't really stand out as if they can actually be interacted with. I also encountered some bugs, especially with the game's text just randomly changing back to French, but the developers are working on bug fixes as we speak. I would also have liked them to improve the actual text that you can see, especially when it comes to tower stats, as some of them are very small and hard to read. I would also have liked the free camera movement in battle to view the enemy character models up close, as it's very standoffish and it doesn't feel particularly fun. All in all, Yerminsul's comedy, tower defence and art design is wonderfully presented throughout. And while rough around the edges, 
Overall, for $15, you're getting a well thought out indie tower defense game that will certainly appeal to fans of the genre. It's a charming title that has enough content for you to really get your money's worth out of. And that's Yermin Soul. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and I will see you next time.